Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I think most of us agree, except for maybe one. So, so it is. All right. It's my child, so I can draw attention to him. Normally, I wouldn't do that, but yeah. Uh, in our prayers, in our prayers, I have an additional prayer to include uh, that didn't make it. That's Virtus Brockman, who's the uncle of Gus and Eileen and Ron and probably other people too, yeah, um, who lives in Iowa, is that right? Yeah, uh, but 91, you said? I think so. Yeah, he ha had multiple falls in the last week or so um, and is ill, so we want to keep, them, keep him in our prayers for recovery. And uh, the service is laid out for you, and that's as we've been doing, so no surprises there. I invite you uh, to turn to page 184 or use the screens. We begin with our divine service. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I call to God, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the I call to God, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power above all in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that we may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Trinity is from Jeremiah chapter 7. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah, who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. For if you truly amend your ways and your deeds, if you truly execute justice one with another, if you do not oppress the sojourner, the fatherless, or the widow, or shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not go after other gods to your own harm, then I will let you dwell in this place. 
in the land that I gave of old to your fathers forever. Behold, you trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered only to go on doing all these abominations? Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the work of your hands I sing for joy. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning, and your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your word. All the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know, the fool cannot understand this, that though the wicked sprout like grass, and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high for heaven. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My enemies have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. To declare that the Lord is upright, He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. Glory be to the Father, For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your word. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. The epistle reading is from Romans chapters 9 and 10. What shall we say then? 
that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, that is, a righteousness that is by faith, but that Israel, who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to, Christ, to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation, I cry out day and night before you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. When Jesus drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days shall come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess together our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God,
because you did not know the time of your visitation. The text for our meditation. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Many of us were taught to pray before our meals, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. But have you considered what you're actually asking for? You're asking for Jesus, the one who has promised to come to judge the living and the dead. When you ask him to visit you, you're not simply asking him just to bless your food and then to take off so that you can go back to your sinful life. No, you're asking him to abide with you like those Emmaus disciples, to abide with you with both his promise and his blessing, but also with his rule, his governance, his judgment. Every time you pray for him to come, you're asking for his visitation. Or perhaps you haven't considered what Jesus meant when he said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the ages of ages. As he gave that promise, he says that the means he uses to bring his presence in your midst are these. In the teaching of his word, in your baptism into his name, and in his body and blood in the sacrament. Just read Matthew's Gospel. He visits you, he comes to you, he's with you always in his word. The word that exposes your sin for what it is. He's with you always in your baptism that crucifies in you the old Adam, the flesh. And he's with you always with his body and blood that went into death and was poured out from his pierced side to forgive you your sins. That means every time that he comes to visit you, he's with you always, but it's particular is when you gather around him and his gifts where he's promised to be found. That means that today, right now, is the day of your visitation. Now, I suppose that word visitation, it sounds soft and nice to us. Jesus, come for a visit. <laughs> but as we heard today, when Jesus visits, his visitation is a two-edged sword. To ask Jesus to visit you is to have him come as your bishop. The word bishop comes from the same word for visit. That is to be your overseer. It combines all sorts of meanings, to visit, to look upon, to investigate, to inspect, to test, to be concerned about, and to care for. All of that is wrapped up in visitation. So as the dictionary says, it is the description of the act in which the Lord, in a special incursion into the course of life of individuals, or of a people, mostly Israel, makes known to them either, makes himself known to them either in judgment or in grace. The visitation takes place when God draws near to his people in their sin and distress and shows himself to be the Lord of history. It may be that judgment is executed by him, but it may also be an act of mercy. And even a visitation, sometimes, of both judgment and grace in the same sentence. So the theological dictionary of the New Testament. Many volumes. <laughs> Go to my office if you want to see it. So what the dictionary is saying is right. It's surveying the whole scriptures and telling you that his word, Jesus' visitation, it cuts both ways. He shows you your sin, he exposes your weakness, and he levels the full accusation of the law against you. And even though you know the things that make for your peace, even with him coming and telling you, you still want to hold on to your old flesh with its passions and desires, or lusts, if you like. You'd rather not know the real root cause of all your distress. You'd rather live a life in darkness and in ignorance. 
And that's why, maybe even for you, you keep Jesus at arm's length. You hesitate to read and to pray the judgment of his word daily. Far better to just keep Jesus in a nice tidy box, to limit the way that he visits you, and then maybe just suffer pastor's words of judgment once a week at most. And you probably got a list of excuses and reasons why it's so hard to be regular in Jesus' word. But in the end, they really all amount to the same thing, not wanting to deal with Jesus as he comes to you. That is to deal with reality. And this brings Jesus sorrow. This actually makes Jesus cry, weep, really, it's true. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it, saying, if you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. The only other time we hear of Jesus crying, weeping, is at the death of his friend, Lazarus. And today he weeps, actually, for the same reason. His people and his city have rejected him. And because they've rejected him, the Lord and giver of life, there's only one result, and that's death. When he weeps over Jerusalem, he's weeping over their death, the way that they try to live apart from him, without the peace of his forgiveness. And there's only one result from that, only one thing that can happen, and that's to die in sin. There's really no other way, either the way of life in Jesus or the way of death. When Jesus weeps, though, we learn that he's not just some kind of callous, arbitrary, capricious, judgmental God who cares for you little either way. It's not like he leaves you to just make a choice between death and life, and then he just resigns himself to whatever judgment you make, whatever decision you choose. That's not it at all. Even today, as he pronounces judgment on the unbelief of Jerusalem, the chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, even then he is calling them to repentance. Some of those who he pronounced judgment against today are those who follow after the apostles in the resurrection and ascension. Those who repent and believe in Christ. Just read the book of Acts. Yes, the destruction of Jerusalem that he prophesied is fulfilled in AD 70 under Emperor Nero. When he sends the Roman army, led by the future Emperor Titus, and Tiberius Julius Alexander as his second in command to besiege and conquer Jerusalem. And so aggravated was Nero with Jerusalem that he destroyed the city, leveled the temple, and left no stone upon another, just as Jesus said. And that's not just some kind of past future action, as it was true for those whom Jesus was speaking to, it's true for us too. Death and destruction is coming. Heaven and earth will pass away. The judgment against sin, against unbelief, is not just for those people 2,000 years ago in the temple. This judgment is against your sin, too. Death may come today or tomorrow. But the one who preaches this terrible end he told you, is also the one who makes for your peace. And actually, he himself, Jesus, is the way of your escape. The Christians, those who believed in Christ, fled Jerusalem before the destruction because they had knew the word of Jesus, the prophecy he had made. And Jesus visits you today so that you know, too, the way for peace. He shows you the way out. He comes today to you, visit you, to save you. So what's the difference between then and now? Yes, the specifics of Jerusalem's particularly, particular leveling by Nero 
that happened a long time ago. But what he prophesied against them is also the same for us. The end result is always the same, the judgment against sin. Just look around. Not one stone will be left upon another here either. Enemies will surround you on every side if they haven't already. Those who seek to destroy you, to tear you away from Jesus, they've built their embankments, they have fortified their walls, and even now they're preparing to assault you. Maybe not physically, but they seek to destroy your relationship to Christ, that is, your trust in him. Do you see it? Do you know it? Well, you can play dumb, you can stand back, deny your savior and watch everything around you collapse and then feign ignorance, the surprise when there isn't a church for you anymore. Or you could listen to Jesus today. Today is the day of your visitation. Take a hard look at yourself. Be honest about the way that you don't trust in him always and in everything, your unbelief, and return to him. Be attentive to his word. Live abundantly by trusting, not in yourself, but in the good gift of peace given to you in his word, his baptism, and his body and blood in the sacrament. Those aren't just nice things that we do together as Christians. Those are the only way forward. The only way forward for you, the only way through this present darkness for this congregation. And really, the only way that the church on earth is preserved. Don't take my word for it. It's what Jesus said. The things that make for your peace. And trusting in him, you know what's the greatest thing? All those enemies who you fear, those ones who threaten to destroy you and your faith, they can do nothing to you, for you are in Christ Jesus. They can throw any and every temptation your way or legal challenges or prohibitions to your gathering together to try to destroy you. But it won't matter. It won't matter provided you stay with Jesus and his promises. As we heard today, they were unable to do anything for all the people were hanging on to his every word, were attentive to him. May God grant it among us also, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We stand.
deliver eternal salvation to those who hear and receive and trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Defend your church throughout the world, O Lord. Give strength to our brothers and sisters in Christ who experience persecution, and turn the hearts of our enemies that they would be brought to repentance and faith and joined to the fellowship of all believers. Lord, in your mercy, Give us hearts to recognize that all that we have comes from your gracious provisions. And keep us faithful when we have more than we need, that we would be generous in our tithes and offerings, and in our assistance of those who need help. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We especially rejoice with those who celebrate their birthday this week, Doug, Brayden, Brian, Rachel, Eileen, Kyle, and Nicole. Those who rejoice in the gift of their baptism, Alan, Cora, Lillian, Jesse, Linda, and Vaughn. Those who give thanksgiving for their marriage, especially Doug and Lisa, Dale and Anne. May you continue to bless us as you have always done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the relief agencies of our Senate and all other groups who provide relief and aid to those in need, especially our mission of the month, LCMS World Relief and Human Care, and also now with all the disaster relief agencies of our Senate as they seek to provide aid to those who suffered under the derailment. Let compassion and mercy be our guiding light, and give wisdom and discernment to those who administer these agencies, that their use of resources would be wise and beneficial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Donald, our president, Tony, our governor, and all those who make and administer our laws, and all judges, that they might serve our country faithfully and make decisions with wisdom. Defend all who serve in our military and give courage to both them and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Support and strengthen those who are sick or suffering or recovering, including Marcella, Jan, Ron, David, Carol, Brad, Janet, and Carol, Pastor Linda, Sandy, Linda, Joan. Ken, Aaron, Roger, and Jean. Especially keeping our prayers for Curtis Rodman as he seeks recovery. In the midst of their trials, keep them always focused upon Christ and the everlasting hope they have in Him. And if it be your will, restore them to physical health and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the great gift your Son, Jesus, has given us in his holy supper. As we join together with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, in lauding and praising you, lift up our hearts, that we would rightly receive Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to our hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
and heart of world, grant us thy peace. Body of Christ given to death for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The body of Christ given for you. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ given unto death for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Death for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Mom, rest I have reason. Who then will have an ever win? The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Death for you. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. Body of Christ given for you. In our Lord. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. to death for you. The body of Christ given for you. For the blood of Christ.
Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. The Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you. Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. The body of Christ given for you. You can't, you know, you don't have to. It's either way. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. The body of Christ given for you. Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given unto death for you. 
body of Christ given for you. Amen. for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ given unto death for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. You can heal if you want. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ given unto death for you. Body of Christ given for you. Solution given. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given unto death for you. Body of Christ given for you. Save thee who can't 
back here. Yeah, I thought, I mean, it's California that has the rolling blackouts, not here. Oh, well. It throws everything off, right? It's funny how much air is in the organ bellows, right? The lights were out, and then it took, what, like two measures? Hi, bye. Now, oh, I'll be with you. And Naomi. Uh-huh. Why are y'all making faces at me? Yes, I, but they won't start until school starts. Hi, how are you doing, Owen? Baby monkey, very creative thing. Good to see you all. I know, that's terrible. It is right. There's something weird about it. It's just weird. Because, yeah, you too. Blessings, good to see you. Jesse. Trying to figure out what the right greeting is. I should do like the parade wave. The non-committal parade wave. Yeah, all right. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you, Merlin. Everything's well? As well as it can be, right? Yeah. Good to see you moving. Up and about. Morning. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. See you virtually on the computer, whatever that is. You can see me, I can't see you. <laughs> I know, that's good, that's good. Good morning, good morning. Hello, good morning, Barb. How you doing? Moving along? All right. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Good to see you.